now we have removed the small intestine from the abdomen and we will see the structures after removing the small intestine this is the transverse colon this is the liver and this is the gall bladder this here is the stomach if we pick the transverse colon up you can see the transverse mesocolon which is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by its root here you can see this structure is the root of mesentery it starts from the duodeno jejunal flexure first let me show you the duodenum this is the duodenum which is the retroperitoneal structure this here is the second part of duodenum the first part is obscured by this transverse mesocolon which we will cut later this is the second part of duodenum this here is the third part this here is the fourth part which is moving upwards and it is continuing down as the jejunum at the duodeno jejunal flexure we have cut the jejunum here and this point is the ileum from which we have removed the small intestine so the root of mesentery starts from the duodeno jejunal flexure this thing and it is moving down from left to the right side side in a diagonal fashion this whole thing is the root of mesentery and it ends over the sous major muscle this is the sous major muscle near the ileocecal junction this these openings which you can see these are the cut edges of the superior mesenteric vessels and there are also small openings which are the branches of these vessels which are yet to be identified now uh, now we can easily identify the different parts of large intestine this thing here which is in the right iliac fossa this is the cecum in the right iliac fossa and you can clearly see this is mobile that means this is an intraperitoneal structure and the appendix is attached to the cecum which is coming out from its posterior wall so this position is called the retrocecal position of appendix and the mesentery of appendix is clearly seen this is the meso appendix the cecum is continuing upwards as the ascending colon so this thing here is the ascending colon now this is fixed that means this is a retroperitoneal structure it reaches the liver from where it curves in the is as the transverse colon and this portion where it is curving is called the hepatic flexure of colon or the right colic flexure it moves as a transverse colon from right to the left side and it reaches the spleen this is the spleen and this transverse colon has now reached the spleen from where it will move downwards as the splenic flexure of colon or the left colic flexure now this is the other end of transverse colon it is now moving down this is the descending colon which is completely retroperitoneal and you cannot move it this portion here this empty space is called the left paracolic gutter now you can see that this descending colon has reached a point where it is again free now this free portion is called the sigmoid colon which is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by this mesentery which is called the sigmoid mesocolon so you can see that meso the sigmoid colon is quite mobile and free the sigmoid colon moves into the pelvis and this is the terminal end of the sigmoid colon from where it will continue down as a rectum which is not visible here we will have to remove the urinary bladder to see the rectum and this is the rectovesical pouch